When you think of Leergang, you might think of a racetrack that is natural, steep and rutted, but it definitely wasn't always the case. Leergang was once the butt of many jokes and by some not considered a real race track at all. So how did it grow from Ugly Duckling into Rider Favourite? Today I thought we'd have a look. Somewhat paradoxically, Leergang might not have been considered the single most demanding racetrack, but it tended to actually offer really good close racing. Plus, it really offered some variety. For instance, after the 2011 famous Champery track, which was steeper and rougher and trickier than ever, they actually came to Leergang for what was basically a sunny bike park afternoon in 2012. Now, obviously it's all downhill, but there is an argument to say that different tracks should suit different rider skills and they shouldn't all try and be the same thing. In fact, even in Leergang's awkward adolescent bike park era, we still saw winners there such as Minar, Gwyn, Rigaud, Rachel Atherton, Josh Bryceland. So it's not as if it wasn't demanding the very best out of the very best. And curiously enough, it was the last venue to ever be won on a 26 inch wheel downhill bike in the elite category, which does contradict the idea that it's a smooth bike park run where average speed is all that mattered. But when it comes to bike tech and its relationship to the track, I actually want to think back to 2017, when Phil Atwell, almost as a protest, decided to ride a practice run on his dirt jump hardtail, just to prove that it really wasn't befitting of a World Cup downhill venue. He even called the track embarrassing. Now at the time there was this rather salacious rumour going about that Red Bull wanted to have their home race, or at least the one closest to their Austrian headquarters, to have the closest racing, and in their mind, best racing of any of the venues. So people said they were taking out routes and removing rocks and buffeting the track to make it as smooth as possible. How much truth is in this? I'm not so sure. That said, the racing was very, very close. Although they weren't actually digging it up, in a lot of riders' eyes, that was the year that things really hit rock bottom. And since then, the track has seen many changes and largely gotten much better. That year, Gwyn won his third Leergang World Cup in a row and Tani Seagrave won in the female category. Now, whilst both those riders are obviously phenomenal and have won at any number of World Cup venues that vary a lot from that Leergang track, that 2017 track could be said to favour riders who had mastered the fundamentals rather than those that could do something really creative or were happy to roll the dice when it came to a race run. For 2018, they changed the track, most notably in the upper section. They removed the beautiful berms of the bike park and sent riders straight through the grassy knolls. Now this open section really rutted up and gave riders the freedom and choice to ride it the way that they wanted. It wasn't just main line with confidence anymore, but rather who could get on the inside, who could hold high lines and who could view the track really creatively. That track also featured some tighter taping to make the open tech sections, well, a little bit more difficult and it took out some of the easier lines. This then meant that it was only a matter of time before certain riders were able to gap over things that other people were just about rolling. 2018, I think, would also have been the first year that we saw riders pick up out of the tunnel and gap all the way to the wall ride. Now, on the live stream, it looks impressive, but it doesn't do it justice. In real life, if you see it, you appreciate the incredible amount of commitment and precision it takes to do something like that. The track was generally really well received, and Dakota Norton, who had started to gain some momentum on that Da Vinci Junior setup, talked about it being interesting and how steep it was. Now, this was a massive departure from the words that people normally describe Leergang with, which would have been dull and boring. The eventual winners of Rachel Atherton and Amri Piron both bested the rest in a really tight field, and the Frenchman stopped Gwyn going four in a row. Either way, it was great to see not only tight racing, but also a track that really demanded a lot of the riders. That said, it was nothing compared to what they had in store. <music> 2019 saw further revisions and built on the success of the 2018 course. So there were more sections that ran parallel to the old bike park run that featured off camber open sections that really challenged the riders. It's also worth considering that even though those warm summer days 
can lead to a really dusty course in the morning in those mountains there is a lot of moisture on the ground now that means that the bees chew it up and by the time the a practice gets there later in the morning the track is already drastically deteriorated and changing rapidly this only makes for great racing and challenges riders to think on their feet as opposed to the predictable bike park conditions they could have relied upon even a year or two prior. Bruni won that year in Leergang, beating Greg Menard by quite a slender margin. That actually proved very important for the overall. It was also great to see Tracy Hanna take her first win for a couple of years. There was a period in women's downhill where Rachel Atherton was so dominant, she kind of won when she wanted and left the other riders fighting for scraps. And then we rolled on to 2020 where things really got good and we finally had a track that was worthy of the best mountain bikers in the world but it was delivered with something of a cool twist. This was the year where they finally got what they've been asking for, a steep, loamy, rutted track and it just so happened to be raced in absolutely treacherous conditions. Thick mud, incredible pools, and some very questionable gaps. And that was before you even got to the motorway. Now in previous years, you'd turn right on that second wall ride, but now you went left and went straight for this just horrible <laughs> section of wooded track that was hard enough to even slow down for when it was really, really wet. In previous years, it felt like the track had been so focused on being manicured that it forgot to let the bikes do the work and kind of change the track to be what it needed to be. This year was all the different and ruts were forming and big spiked tires were struggling to clear but ripping the dirt up all the same. It proved to be something of a watershed moment for Camille Blanche who actually won in Leergang for the first time and started her run of dominance there that was only ended last year by Valley Hole's first win on home soil. It also saw a win for Reese Wilson that was nothing if not incredibly popular. Now Reese had been chipping away for years, I mean he'd scored a, I suppose it'd been 2018 when he scored a podium at Fort William and he was known to be a massive talent on the bike. He just never quite had the stars align but when they did in Leergang he showed how he is a master of his craft. From 2021, we have seen some revisions to the track year after year. However, it seems to be building on the foundations of that big overhaul between 2018, 2019 and 2020. It's also left a really interesting blueprint in European downhill when it comes to World Cup venues, because I think we've also seen a really positive impact on tracks such at Lenzerheide have taken the approach of let's open up some sections, let's let riders choose where they want to go and move away from this prescriptive bike park approach of, hey, we've got a good bike park, we want to advertise it, we want to have a run that, you know, you and I could run at a weekend as punters, and move to an idea of, let's make the best racetrack possible. And I think that is just f***ing sick. It's also been really great to see riders such as Marcus Peckle have a bit of influence on what that Leergang track looks like, and it's definitely been a good thing. Funnily enough, Leergang, used to be considered something of a reprieve after the onslaught of Fort William, which normally is a week prior in the World Cup calendar. But in some ways, they've kind of flipped roles in recent years. You've seen the Fort William track get smoother, take some rocks out, fill in some gaps with some sand, and the Leergang track kind of radder and badder than ever. The weather's also flipped, but I don't think Leergang can take credit for that, nor would they want to. And it's been great to see Leergang go from this weird bike park curiosity, almost novelty venue 10 years ago, to now being one of the best downhill tracks on the calendar. More power to them, I think they've done a great job. So we've got the race there this weekend. So get in the comments with who you think is gonna make the most of what will hopefully be a steep, rutted, and in some ways quite horrible Leergang track. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.